Hello. Hello. It's fantastic to see you. I'm Colin from Hey You Guys. Okay. Um, congratulations on your new series. Now Thank we you. have to keep we have to keep it or your new show. We have to keep it spoiler free. But I have, as I said, uh, one of James's old shirts that I found in a charity shop. I have some of these, which I thought <laughs> that's pertinent. I remember that moment. What and happened I, for real? <laughs> yeah, and also have a cup of tea. Uh, yeah oh, but uh, yes yes also has, yes that's has this put you off ever drinking tea again yes that moment was a crashing and colossal disappointment um <laughs> our encounter with as jeremy put it his worldwide drinks club <laughs> to the embassies <laughs> we'd gone in and just, oh god it was it's a dry country so for you, yeah. you know, it's a dry country in mauritania um so we hadn't we hadn't had a drink and we went to the embassy in the hopes of getting one and we were offered one tea. Is it lactose G? G and T had been all over it. But I did not want tea. It was it was an enormous disappointment. Yes. The disappointment was palpable, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so when you're coming up for an idea for another show, whereabouts did this one come from? Because I, I'd actually heard mention in a previous Grand Tour about doing the Sahara. Yeah. Um, but that was a good few years ago. I mean, we're always going to be pulled towards that area because the legendary Paris Dakar used to cross it. And, you know, that's just the most exciting and evocative racing um, rally raid, crossing barren deserts and rocky terrain in cars at heli speeds. Um, the other reason we were very happy to go and do it was, of course, we've had to make we had to make a few back during lockdown. Yeah. And it was nice to be well, when we did everything we could. <clears throat> to be as adventurous as we could be, but it was difficult. Um, the, that, that's not to say we weren't happy with those shows. We were really pleased with them because they were kind of, Andy Wilman coined it, they were the Grand Tour unplugged. Right. Because we couldn't just rely on the genius work of our crews for capturing amazing exotic places and making them look incredible because we couldn't go anywhere exotic. So what yeah. we actually did was we, we, we reconnected with with what's at the heart of the show, which is these three idiot blokes trying to do stupid things in inappropriate cars in the wrong place, um, we really, which was great. We needed that. It did us good. So we could take that with us and once again sally forth across the world and go somewhere preposterous and difficult and challenging, which was great. So that it just it just worked. Um, and we're always happy when we can go into somewhere where we create our own world and yeah. get on with that thing, which is what we did. And it has got the essential grand tour essence behind it it's got things blowing up it's got several significant car ad hoc car modifications yes it, it does have yeah i mean the stories of the cars is great because if at, at, at the time quite a few manufacturers certainly lamborghini porsche high-end supercar manufacturers were suddenly turning out cars designed to to sort of emulate the the dakar races and so they're supercars but they're they're long-legged up on suspension they can cross terrain they can go fast off-road and on uh they're also quite amazingly expensive so we thought well rather than do that <laughs> yeah. typical us well we can go and do that on a budget so rather than spend a quarter of a million or a lot more on one of these things we'll go and buy older versions of older super or grand touring cars and turn them into dakar I chose the wrong one, as became evident. <laughs> but it was, um, but for you, what's the what's the fun and excitement of still doing these kind of things and still being able to get out there and tell these stories, um, partly post lockdown, but also the stories in themselves. Um, it's just a colossal privilege, and it's not wasted on us. Please don't think that it is. Um, but I don't think any of us. I know none of us ever thought we'd ever get to do. Um, to do the journeys, just to do the journeys would be an unbelievable experience. But then to be, you know, of a small part in being a massive machine designed to record that and capture the essence of it and deliver it to millions of people across the world is an unbelievable privilege. So, yeah, and, and I, I actually, I, I recorded a little video, video message just to myself. It's just for me on my telephone. One evening when we were blasting across the desert, it was dark. We couldn't film anymore, but we had to cover the distance because we've got to do the journey <laughs> to get yeah. the stop for that night. And I just recorded a video message to myself as a reminder, just to say, Rich, this is what this is where you've been. This has been your office for 20 years now. Out here in the desert, it's eight o'clock. I've got another two hours of driving ahead of me. I think the car's going to make it, but I don't know. I've got every light available up on the dash. 
Um, and to do that, that adventure stuff, God, if, if somebody had told me when I was 10, 20, I was going to do that, I simply wouldn't believe it. Mm. And, that's one, and that's one thing that I love is that with the Grand Tour and with your previous show and with a lot of your other things is the way that storytelling about cars and combustion engines has changed and evolved over the years. Um, because you've got shows like the Grand Tour, you've got things on bikes like you and McGregor did with The Long Way Round. Um, and these are love affair stories about people with their vehicles, sometimes in extraordinary places, sometimes just doing extraordinary things. But I think everybody has them. I mean, I have stories about my first ever car, which was a Ford Escort Estate for reasons well, that I carried my, carried my drums around in it. I, I think we've always held the view, I certainly, well, we all have. Um, our shows, you don't have to be a car nerd to watch them. We take care of that for you. We do that. But cars in the context of the shows we make, and that applies to the engineering shows I've made as well, um, they're just metal until you bring people into the equation. Mm -hmm. And in the case of cars, they move us physically. They, they enable us to lead our lives. They take us to school to work, to our weddings, to funerals, to the holidays, they, they, they move us. And if, if a machine moves us physically, it can and shall move us emotionally. Of course it will, they're the enablers. Anything in our lives that's beyond the confines of our caves that provides shelter, but everything else we require demands that we leave our cave in pursuit of it. And the key is the word pursuit, because whatever I need, whatever resource, whether it's food, water, a mate, mental stimulation, company, conflict, anything involves getting there and getting there before the next man or woman generally bestows an advantage on you. <laughs> yeah. so a machine that we've devised to enable us to do that is absolutely critical to us leading our lives. It's shaped our world. So that's why they're of such vast appeal. And that's, that's where our stories have always come from. They're not engineering stories, they're human stories. Yeah. And do you think the the format has changed in the moving from, you know, maybe a 60 minute program now to this is an epic two and a quarter hours, isn't it? It gives you the chance to tell more um tell more stories in depth. Yeah, and I think, you know, I I just sound big headed. I don't mean it to be, but it does sound it. Please don't let it. Um we've earned the right. We started with, uh, you know, we, we've all done car shows and written about cars for decades. We came together, and including Andy Wilman in that, um, in 2000, 2001, two, for Top Gear. Um, but it was just a car show. It was it was the shows that I would watch. You know, when, on a Thursday night, it used to be Top Gear when I was a kid. William Willard. So, because I'm exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Angela Ritter. Yep. Um, because I love cars. But, and that's where we started. I remember the original meetings we had together. This is right back before the show was on air, 2000-ish. Uh, I remember us saying, a few ground rules for our show. No supercars. We're just going to do relatable everyday cars that people really buy. We're going to give them the advice that they want to hear. No foreign travel. We're going to drive them where people really drive. <laughs> what do you realize? Famous last words. Well, at that time, there wasn't an appetite or a need for that show, because let's be honest, the difference between one car and the next was the trim level, whether it had four electric windows or just electric windows in the front. So very quickly, it was about, hang on, this, it's human stories, it's people that matter. So that's where we went with our show. That doesn't mean that there isn't a time coming when a, a car show about cars isn't gonna be important, because it is, the industry that we work in and commentate on is changing massively. And the decisions we each make now regarding the purchase of our next car is probably the biggest single contribution we can each make to defining what our future is gonna be. So we should make that decision from a well-informed platform. We need to know this stuff, but that's a very different show to what we do, because what we do is celebrate um, the human interaction with a machine that, enable a large part of human life over the last century. It defined our world. 
Well, congratulations on the show again. It's uh, fantastic. I uh, really love watching it. it. <laughs> and um, yeah, look, look forward. Look forward maybe seeing another one, despite what the press says. Yeah, well, yeah, well. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed the photo over my. I have very much noticed it. Yes, that's the Delahaye that we restored. Well, well, I met you. I met you at Salon Privé last year while you were. Oh well, nice to see you again. So uh, yeah, so uh, it's a fantastic car. And hope it ca are you going to be at Salon or? Um... Good I don't know that year. we're all this year. I don't know if we'll have a car to get us there, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I probably will go for myself and have a boot around. Excellent. Well, I might see you there then. Absolutely. All right. Take care, Richard. Thank, Thank you season. so much. Take care. All right. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.